Hello, my name is Todd Miranda, and in this video I'm going to demonstrate how to customize the layout of a list box item in WPF. Let's begin in Microsoft Visual Studio, and I'm using Microsoft Visual Studio 2008. Let's choose New Project. We'll choose .NET Framework 3.5, and we'll do a WPF application, and we'll name this appropriately. Okay. Now, technically, we're talking. We're going to use a list box as our example control, but technically, this same concept works for uh, any kind of any kind of item list. So there's an item collection. There's uh, or there's a items control. There's a couple of different types of of items list, combo box type things. This will work pretty much for for all of those because they all use that same the same concept of a data template. So. Let's begin by using a list box, and we're just going to give it a name so that we can reference it from the code behind, and we'll call it list items. And then we're going to do, let's say, width equals 200. That should be plenty. And we're not going to set the height. We'll set a max height to 300. And then maybe to make it a little bit easier to read let's just set font size to 16 and I think that should just about do it okay so there's our list box pretty pretty straightforward pretty simple let's go to our code behind and in the loaded event and we'll just choose the new event handler and let studio create that handler for us we'll go to our code behind and in our code behind, let's just add some arbitrary items to our list. All right, we just want to we just want to test the list, make sure that it works, make sure it's behaving the way we expect it to. So let's go list items dot items dot add, and you could obviously data bind this to some kind of data source, but uh, I purposely want to show some of the items that we'll we'll create a class that we can bind to this in a little bit. So let's do items dot add. Let's just do item. Or let's do my item one. All right, so we'll copy that a few times. Say item two, three, four, and five, and then let's go ahead and run this. And so what we what we want to see here is that we've got our list box, and we've got our items in our list box we can select those items and that particular item gets highlighted so this is the behavior that we expect from our list box and that seems to be working fine we've added some items to our list box so we can select those items well let's say that you had items that you want to put in your list box that are a little bit more complex so let's say that we've got some type of class that we're going to use and we're going to bind a class or a collection of that class to our list box. All right. So let's let's go ahead and create a class. We're going to just do public class, and we'll just call this my people data. All right. So let's have a, have a couple properties. Let's do public string first name get set all right and then we'll do public string last name get set and then we'll do let's do a int age oops get set and then maybe we'll do a string Let's do let's do favorite movie. All right. Oops. There we go. Okay, so that gives us some properties that we can use. We've got first name, last name, age, and favorite movie. So maybe we're doing some demographics on people who watch movies. And instead of adding strings into our list box, let's add an instance of our class. So let's just do new my people data. We'll do first name, oops, let's say curly brace. First name equals Han 
last name equals solo. Let's say age is we'll say 45, and favorite movie equals. I wonder, perhaps Star Wars. All right, so there's one of our classes. So let's let's just copy this. And we'll paste a few of those in there. All right, so we'll go with first name James Kirk, age 36. And maybe this is Star Trek. Let's go with, uh, let's go with. Martha Jones, age 24. Favorite movie, perhaps, is Doctor Who. So these demographics are obviously skewed towards what looks like sci fi fans. All right, so let's do, we'll do Will. Smith, and we'll do age 32. Perhaps this is some movie called Independence Day. Let's do so, first name Christian. Bale, age 40, favorite movie, The Dark Knight, and last but not least, we'll do Hugh Jackman. Wolverine. Okay, that should give us some, some data that we can look at. All right, so now instead of adding strings, we've added instances of our class to our list box. So let's run this. Okay, so obviously the problem that we see here is that what we get out is the, it's, this is actually the, what comes out of the call to to string on our class, which is really the, the fully qualified name of the class you can see here. So the name of our project dot the name of the class. Well, to remedy that, let's go back to our XAML. Let's go back to our list box. All right. And we're going to say display member path equals last name. All right. So because we, we can only have one field in display member path. So let's run this again. Okay, so great. So now we have we've bound our class objects or class instance objects to our list box. Still behaves exactly as it does, and we display the last name. But we've got more data than that in our items. So how do we display more data than just last name? Well, we can go in and we can use templates for our list box, for the list items actually. So let's go into here and let's just say the list list box dot item template and then this is going to be a data template and in our data template we can have pretty much you know for the most part we can have pretty much anything we want in here and this is where the real power comes in so let's get rid of our display member path and let's go into our data template and let's just come in here and let's do a stack panel we'll do orientation equals vertical and then in our stack panel we'll have you know pretty simply we'll have text block we'll do its text is equal to and we're going to do a binding expression binding path equals first name 
And then we've got some others in here. We've got last name. We've got age. And then we'll go ahead and put in here our favorite movie field. Okay, so we've just used text blocks and we've bound the text property to the properties of our class. So now we're going to rerun this. And now we can see that our list items are a little bit little bit richer. It's not just a string. It's actually a block of strings that are laid out even though they're just laid out sequentially they are laid out here alright so let's go and let's just make this even a little more interesting to demonstrate that we can do anything we want to do inside here so inside our data template let's do a border border brush equals blue let's do border thickness of one maybe we'll do a corner radius of five alright and then we'll take our stack panel, we'll put it inside the border, okay? So, so far so good. Uh, you know, let's go inside our stack panel and really, you know, you could do this with a grid instead of a stack panel. It might be a little bit easier, you've got a little bit more flexibility to lay things out. But what we'll do is inside our stack panel, we're going to put another stack panel. And this is going to be orientation equals horizontal and we'll move our first name and last name into that stack panel and actually perhaps we want to add another text block text equals some a space and you could do this with a text block with a run and multiple bindings inside there but for, for this simple idea, we'll do first name, space, last name. That's going to run horizontally. Maybe in these we'll do font size of 16. All right, so we'll do that here. And we'll come down to these. Oops, age. This will be 12. And we'll do the same thing here, 12. Maybe we'll go into this stack panel and we'll do background equals something really light. So we'll do maybe an antique white. We don't need this first name and last name again. All right, so that gives us um, our stack panel that's vertical. And then we'll go in here to our border and let's just do margin equals and we'll do uh, zero on the side. Maybe we'll do four, zero, four. That'll give us a little spacing on top and bottom. And let's run this. All right. So now here's our list box. We can see that we've got a little bit more richness to this. Uh, we've got we've got a little bit more capability. This is definitely not your typical not your typical list box items that you see in here. However, you see that we've got a lot of power, a lot of flexibility to be able to come in and um, lay this out, lay these items out any way we want, and we can really make this list box really come to life and really look like uh, not just the plain old list box that you see but something that's a little bit more special than just the plain old list box which increases the, the usability increases the user experience and you can really make your items in, in your in your list box stand out this way so you can see that it's fairly easy to do this using the item template property of our list box and then you just put a data template inside there and within that data template you can go crazy. You can, you've got all the flexibility that WPF will give you to be able to lay out the items within that data template and make your items however you want them to look.